Hey there, welcome to the series and the channel. This City Skylines project is going to follow a city from its founding in the late 1800s to the present day. I've always wanted to build something like this, and it's something that city builders are generally pretty bad at. I've always loved games like Anno and Tropico, but they never really scratched that itch for me of following a city from its early roots. This time period in American history has always been really interesting to me. So many aspects of cities and their development began changing during this era, and what a better way to show it than with city skylines. All right, so following the Civil War, there's this huge push by the federal government to complete a transcontinental railroad between the East and West Coasts. And as a result, several different companies made a huge push to cross the country. Several lines were built with one, the Northern Pacific Railway, running from Minnesota to Washington State. Our city's gonna be founded right along this line, and while it won't be based on a real city per se, it will take inspiration from actual cities in that region. Many of the first towns in this region were a direct result of these new railroads, and many are still relatively young in comparison to the other cities around the world. If you're curious about our town's name, it's taken from John Coulter. He was an American explorer that actually traveled with the Lewis and Clark expedition before breaking off and exploring other areas on his own. He's actually responsible for mapping out a decent portion of Yellowstone National Park, as well as other areas within that region. I always try to do this with my cities. I feel like it adds a lot of realism, just grounding it based on someone's name. Naming towns after American explorers was actually fairly common during this chapter of American history, and it's just an easy way to build a backstory for your projects. So the plan for this series is to actually split it into five distinct chapters. Each chapter will cover a different time period from this city's perspective. So the first chapter is in the 1800s, 1882. The next one will likely be the early 1920s, followed by the 1950s or 60s, then the 1980s, and the last chapter will be the present day. Each will likely get longer as time goes on and as the city grows. I've always wanted to play with limitations like this where you need to actually work around what's been established. It's really tempting with city building games to just build from a blank slate, but in reality that almost never happens. Cities have a history and layers. Hopefully by the end of the series we'll have built something that reflects the full weight of our city's history. Now full disclosure, I am not a historian by any means, nor do I live in the Pacific Northwest, so forgive me for any mistakes I might make. I was a history teacher for several years, and my main goal for this project was to just merge my passion for history with city building games. All right, our city will be a direct result of the Northern Pacific Rail Line, and our founders would have seen an opportunity to be a key city between the east and west coasts of the country. Typically, the land adjacent to these rail lines was actually sold by the railroad companies themselves. This helped them raise funds for the lines and often fill their own pockets. There were plenty of cases where this was abused, but that's a story for another time. Now the founders of Fort Coulter will be establishing their town right along here, next to our railroad. Though that'll have to wait for another time, as I'd like to build another structure here first. Today we're going to be building a small fort right over here. Forts like these would have likely been one of the first structures in an area like this. They mainly existed in an effort to maintain order as well as enforce claims on Native American lands. These forts would have been especially modest and more of an outpost than anything else. I'm using a map that I found on the workshop, I believe it's called Skagen, I'll add it in the description. i would made several changes to the map, and you might notice that there's no highways and there are only dirt roads. That was pretty intentional. I swapped out all of the highways for dirt roads. I reduced the number of rail lines and tried to make it as realistic as possible. Full warning, if you switch to entirely dirt roads like I did, it takes forever for your citizens to actually move into the town and move into buildings. The speed limits are just ridiculously slow and as a result, it takes forever for them to actually reach the center of the map. I do really love this map though. There's a rail line that splits near the mountains 
as well as a wide network of dirt roads. Now this wouldn't have been all that realistic for the time period, there'd likely be one path, but this will actually be really helpful for us once we're expanding our city out and building more of these farmsteads. Now you're going to notice in a minute that I'm actually playing with money on, and this could be a terrible, terrible mistake, but this is typically how I play, and I feel like it adds a lot of realism and fun to the game. Trying to play realistically with this might be a little bit tricky, especially in our earlier eras, but I think we can find some workarounds and some aspects of the game that we can change to make things work. All right, so our first order of business is to actually clear out this forested area for our fort. So we're actually just gonna clear out all the trees here. Now I feel like this is actually pretty realistic. The fort itself is gonna be made of wood, so it makes sense for them to actually cut down the trees and use those to build our walls. And they'd likely want clearer sight lines to see any oncoming attacks. So now we need to build an access road right off of our main road here. And I think I want this to actually curve in a little bit. And I'm gonna run a line right out the back. I'm thinking that I'd like to actually have a dock behind the fort so they could be resupplied by the river, which would be extra helpful for the fort and its inhabitants and add kind of a, a cool design to it. Now I wanna build a courtyard in the middle, so we'll drag these out. A lot of these early forts had courtyards in the middle uh, where soldiers could gather, run drills, store supplies, things like that. And I think I wanna do the same here. Now I'm going to use these palisades that I found in the workshop. These are beautiful, they're really well done, they look great. And I'm just going to drop these here. Oops, forgot the fence mode. There we go. And this is just going to be a basic square rectangular shape for a fort. This was actually really typical for forts of this era. They didn't look all that fancy. These were never really meant to actually stick around. They were more temporary structures than anything else. So they were made of wood. Buildings were typically made of wood. They kind of served a very basic purpose. And so we're not going to build it all that perfectly. I doubt the actual forts were actually all that beautiful. Uh, these were definitely function over form. And I think that looks pretty great. Again, not a perfect square, not a perfect rectangle. Please forgive me. But I think that will do the trick. And I just gotta line these up and we'll add some towers. All right, and that is looking great. I am loving where we're at. And now I'm gonna add some buildings within the fort and I'm trying to get these larger buildings to line up. Um, this was part of the same set that actually came with the Palisade walls. Uh, they're these great wooden buildings, they look excellent. The only issue is when you place them, some of the roofs, ah, see it did it again. Some of the wall colors and the roofs are actually different colors. And so you have to cycle through them and you, then you just move it to actually line them up. And now I'm going to actually put some of these barracks around the outside. The great thing about this asset is they actually do serve as houses. So there will be people living there and you'll get a decent amount of traffic hopefully within this fort. And you know I'm actually going to change these roads over. These rural roads don't quite fit within the fort. I want it to look like there's a lot of traffic coming in and out. And we'll add some sidelines here. And it's not liking that. <laughs> it's giving me a hard time here. You know what, let's try and move it. There we go. Whew, what a mess. All right, that is looking great. I'm loving where we're going with this. And now I'm going to add this chapel in, and I think this would have actually been really realistic for the time period. There's no other town yet, so it would make sense for there to be some place of worship within the fort itself. 
So I'm just going to add one of these over here and it actually matches these buildings really well. So and if you notice, I'm building all of these around the outside. These early forts, all of the buildings, for some reason, kind of shared walls with the walls of the fort, or at least around the exterior. Uh, now I'm going to add some details. Wow, and what a difference decals make. Crazy to see the difference. Now I'm just gonna place down some props. These props will be pretty useful for just filling out the space within the camp and making it look like it's been lived in. Uh, these are just some storage bags that I'm putting down and some carts with supplies that likely wouldn't have been put away yet. And again, I want this to feel unruly and not necessarily clean, <laughs> so if the mud pit in the middle hadn't given it away yet. But just adding some small details to the fort that make it feel like it's been lived in and that it's being used constantly. This would have been more than a military presence in the area. This would have been a marketplace. This would have been a meeting area. As you can see, there's a chapel, so there'd be a church there. This is a gathering place more than just a military installation. Following the Civil War, the American military was really stretched far too thin and budgets were being cut. And as a result, a lot of these frontier forts would have been kind of unruly in a sense and would have housed little more than just a company of soldiers. This would have been a job with really low pay, really low prestige, and it just wouldn't be a great living situation by any means. Uh, there would have been constant collisions between settlers and Native Americans, and it was often up to the fort to help mediate those, often not in the best way. It's strange because the... American military was really focused on the West prior to the Civil War, and then was kind of distracted for several years during that war, and eventually turned their attention back to the West. So you'd have an influx of new and veteran soldiers coming over to these frontier forts. Now all these cabins look pretty much the same, and I'm using some props here to actually differentiate them a bit and make them a little bit more unique. A little bit goes a long way here. I just don't want them to all look like cookie cutter structures. This flagpole needs something, so I'm gonna try and add a base to it. And I, I know this is a garbage can, so bear with me on this one, but I think, yeah, that looks great actually. That worked out. Now I wanna add some of these sandbags to just really fill out the space. And now I am building a livestock area, and this might not be the most realistic aspect of this fort, but I thought it'd make a lot of sense because if you were attacked, you'd want to bring your livestock within the walls of the fort. So I'm building a little fenced off area here. We'll run this just over here. I think that size should be good. And I wanna be able to actually put, so you can put these ploppable cows in here that'll actually move around. Yeah, once we start playing, I'm pretty sure they show up. But there'll be some cows within that fenced area that we'll be milling about, and then I'm gonna add a little building here and some other details. Ah, those details add so much, and now I'm adding a water tower to our fort. Now utilities are kind of a tricky thing to sort through with this era because cities really weren't providing any city services at this time, nothing like today. So water would have been really up to individuals to find. Uh, electricity obviously wouldn't have been a thing. So we're gonna have a few workarounds, but I felt like this fort would have had a water tower, even just for supplying the livestock that are stored there. And then I'm gonna run some water lines under the ground. Again, completely unrealistic, but kind of necessary. Otherwise we'll have some really big zoning issues later on. So gonna run those lines and then we'll just add some more detail. Uh, 
Oh, those cannon emplacements are so cool. I am going to try and find ways to work those into other aspects of this project. But now we're going to be adding a dock area to our fort and potentially like a boathouse too. Now, if you go to this region of the country today, most of the rivers are not this navigable. There's tons of dams along the way. The changes in elevation alone make it really, really difficult to get ships in and out. But I wanted to kind of tweak it a bit for this project because I thought it'd be a lot more interesting if there was some boat traffic. So that's where this is coming from. This is a bit unrealistic, but I thought it'd be a cool touch and a neat addition to have passengers coming in. So we're going to snake this road around here and I'm going to drag it out. Now I'm going to have to sort out this height difference with the water lines. So we'll use move it here. We can bring that down. Perfect. All right, that's looking better. And sink it a little bit more. And I don't want this slope to be too big. Uh, again, people are going to be either walking this or using carriages to go up and down. So I don't want it to be too steep. And that should do the trick. And oh, all of my power demands are up now. So what I'm going to be doing to get around our utilities on the workshop, there are these great little boxes that uh, I think they're called cubes or power cubes. Let me find it here. Basically what these do, they provide that city resource for free. And what you can do, there we go, block services. So you can just drop one of these and then you use move it and you can hide it within a building. So the great thing about these boxes is the fact that they actually supply about like 10 megawatts of power, which I think is a little bit more than a wind turbine. You can place them anywhere. You can drop them down and use move it and hide them within a building and they provide power. You don't need to hook them up to anything else. Again, I know this is not realistic at all, but the game requires that you actually provide power to buildings in order for them to function. So we're going to keep getting these dumb little notifications or things won't grow. And so this is a nice little workaround. The fact that it's free is nice too, because cities, again, wouldn't have been providing power to other people at this time. So anyway, this is a nice little touch. They have them for all city services. I highly recommend checking them out. There we go. Got our road laid out. And again, I wanted to switch these over. I Those rural roads, I think they look great, but they don't look like they're used enough to really stand out. So again, I want this to seem like there's a lot of traffic going up and down. And I'm going to use decals like I did within the fort to make it look a little bit more rugged. All right, so you may have seen some power lines earlier next to the train tracks, and those aren't actually power lines. Those are telegraph lines. Now, they actually do provide power or transport power, and that's a nice little workaround that we can use within the game. But they actually look very similar to telegraph lines from the era, and those were used pretty extensively, especially along rail routes. So we're going to be pretending these are our telegraph lines. So it'd make a lot of sense for one of these lines to actually branch off to the fort. These lines were often built as the rail lines were being built. They served as a great way for people along the rail line to tap into if they had issues with their train, if they were attacked, things like that. So it makes sense for the fort to have a telegraph line because they'd likely be receiving distress calls or updates, orders, things like that. So we're going to add those as well. And now we're just lining up our dock. This is a really basic dock. I think this is from Strict Toaster. This is one of his assets. And I mainly picked it because it was cheap and bare bones so I can make it kind of look however I want. So the only issue with this dock is the fact that it's concrete, which is completely unrealistic. So we're actually gonna be using wood planks to cover it and make it look a little bit more rustic. And uh, I'll just use move it to kind of duplicate that over and over. Then I found this great boathouse asset, and I'm gonna try and sink this right into the dock itself. Just having a building down here adds a lot of realism and just a little bit more character to the project. Now, hopefully I can sink this down without the game thinking it's underwater. That's an issue a lot in this game, so we'll see if we can pull this off.
But we'll put this right about here. Yeah, that looks great. Fits in. I feel like I need to adjust this road. Ah, so much easier than the first time. <laughs> All right, perfect. And that is coming along. Now I'm gonna add some more props. I really think this dock area needs something. So maybe I've got, I've got a wood tower asset that maybe I can use. So let's see if I can find it. Yeah, perfect. So this tower, I think this will fit nicely. It's almost like a lookout tower. I'm gonna add it to the building itself. And I think if I use move it, this will actually look like it belongs or is actually part of that building that's there. There we go. And we're gonna turn this around so it faces the road. Boom, look at that. Love it. Looks like it's part of the building. Now I'm using more decals here and more props than I am used to, and more than I'd prefer, frankly, but there are just gonna be a few key focal points in this first season, the fort, the town, and maybe a couple other locations that I really wanna draw all of our focus to, and we might as well make them look as good as possible. It's a great way of covering your mistakes as well, and frankly, I use that probably more than I should. Oh, so much better. All right. And the last thing we're going to do with the dock area is add this boat that I found in the workshop. I think it's actually pretty realistic to be out on like a lake or a small river like this. So we'll plop that here. And uh oh, we are having some sewage issues. I completely forgot about this. So we're going to do the same thing as last time we're gonna use one of these block services with the sewage buildings. There we go. So we're gonna plop this block services line down and then I'm just gonna drag this and hide it within our boathouse. During this time period, the best you're gonna get is likely an outhouse. You probably won't even get that, so the idea of a city running sewage lines or other water pipes like this is completely unrealistic. And so we're gonna kind of cheese the system again and cheat in a way to provide these services. Again, buildings won't grow and won't function without them. That's a lot better. We'll just run these water lines and that issue should disappear in just a moment here. And then we'll get back to detailing. All right, so I was detailing over here and I thought, wow, it'd be really cool if there was some sort of house or a residence underneath the bridge, just kind of tucked away, hidden from everything. So I'm gonna run this road down here and kind of build, maybe I'll use the same house I used at the boat dock. That looked pretty good. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, so we're gonna have this little house down here and Maybe add a few little details to it, but this is just a small like fishing house or residence that's hidden away from everything. I'm going to update these roads and do a little bit more detailing. And then I was looking at it and I thought, you know, it could use another path over there, a faster way to get to the fort. So I'm adding a pedestrian path that actually cuts through the woods here and will connect that house to the fort itself. That looks awesome. I'm just gonna move these trees out of the way. Ugh, love it.
Wow, how cool is that? Oh, and you can see a caravan coming in the background there. I can't guarantee this fort will survive to the end of the series, but I am just absolutely loving how this turned out. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Next time we'll be working on the town, and I hope you'll be along for the ride. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe. It helps the channel immensely. See you next time.